Hey everybody, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring, and in this video I'm going to cover the top 10 math formulas that you must memorize for the SAT. I'm going to do it really quick, just mostly as either a way to get the ball rolling if you're starting your prep, or if you're watching this video the night before the test, just to remind you of what you need to memorize. But if you want more detail, go to the description in this video and you will see links to other videos that I have made with practice problems that will go into deeper explanations of how these formulas work. This is just meant to be reminded and let it also be a reminder of why you should subscribe to this channel because you cannot normally learn how to do the SAT well with these little 30 second videos that you see on other websites. The Sattel Tutoring channel is always meant to be a library of comprehensive resources that you can use over a long period of time to improve your scores. So make sure you subscribe so that you are always reminded of this important resource that's there for you long before you actually take your test. But without further ado, let's get into the 10th most important formula, the circle equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared hk is the center r is the radius and you can see an example down there but the reason this is the 10th most important is it's not really worth a lot of points on most SATs you're gonna see probably just one question that involves this equation but the good thing is that 90% of the time this is all you need to know is this this version of it so being able to read it and know what the center is going to be know what the radius is gonna be that's it so this right here is probably a very easy 10 points that I just got you by reminding you of this formula. So make sure that you've got that on the test. Odds are good that it's gonna come up. Let's contrast that with number nine, which is the discriminant. This is a formula that is part of the quadratic formula. It's the part under the radical, b squared minus 4ac. And while quadratic formula tells us the solutions to any quadratic equation, this formula tells us the number of solutions. It's a bit of a shortcut. It doesn't tell us the specifics of the solutions, but based on whether it is less than, equal to, or greater than zero, we can know whether there are no one or two solutions to that equation. And we get the a, b, and c from the standard formula form of, the, of a parabola, which we will talk about later. This is a kind of high cost, high points kind of uh, rule here. So it's high cost because there's a lot to memorize and it's very confusing. But it's high points because if you can get this formula down, it's probably be a way to get you over the 700, 750 mark in the math section. So it's really important for those high scorers because it is difficult, but it is going to come up on pretty much every SAT where you need to know the number of solutions for some sort of system or quadratic and that's why we want to make sure we've got this down. It's very likely to come up. Let's talk about number eight is the only geometry formula on this list. And that is because most geometry formulas are given to us in the reference chart at the beginning of both math sections. So you don't need to memorize area of a circle. You don't need to memorize volume of a cylinder. It's given to you. But SOHCAHTOA is a mnemonic device that helps us remember the trigonometry ratio. So it's kind of three formulas in one, but it's the only thing you really need to memorize that is very likely to come up on the test. And just here are all the versions. It's just a way to remind you what the fractions look like. But if you see a trigonometry question on the SAT, the odds are very, very good that all you need to know is SOHCAHTOA. So make sure you've got that memorized. In fact, it would be the first thing that I would write on my page if I saw sine, cosine, or tangent in any part of a question. Number seven is the statistics formula. The average or the mean is going to be the sum of all of the numbers in a data set divided by how many numbers are in that data set, how many data points there are. So we need to know this formula, and again, if you see that a question is about the average, it mentions the mean, the first thing I would do is write this formula on your page. You, you don't know how you're going to use it yet, but it's probably going to come in handy. Just because, you know, you're reviewing the night before maybe, mean, median, mode, these are easy things to confuse. So just remember the definitions. Median is going to be the middle number if you arrange them in order. The mode is the most common number. Range is also very easy to calculate. That's the maximum number minus the minimum number. And for all of these concepts, make sure you understand how the data is being presented to you. The SAT loves to present data sets as frequency charts, histograms, dot plots, so we have to take the frequency into account. It might not just be a nice list of numbers, you might have to do some multiplication to understand how many of each number there are. Let's take a look at numbers six and five. They're linked. They are both versions of quadratic equations. We have the standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and the root or factored form. And we move between these a lot. That's why they're on the same slide here. We both need to factor and foil for lots 
lots of questions in the SAT. So these are really important formulas. But beyond just being able to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we also need to understand what it gives us about the parabola when we see these two equations. So the standard form is going to tell us the direction of the parabola. If it's smiling, if it's opening upward, it's because that A term is positive. A frown would be if it opens down, if it's A term is negative. And then the C is going to give us the Y intercept. And then for the root or factored form, the reason we do that is to find the X intercepts of the parabola. There's usually going to be two of them when we do this. But also just remember that when we factor, we get these little parentheses terms, but the actual root is going to be the flipped sign. So if it says like minus three, X minus three, that's telling us that the X intercept is positive three. It's a very common mistake to make. The next two formulas are also linked. They're about parabolas, again, about quadratic equations. And they're both about the vertex, which is something that everybody learns in school, but for some reason, everybody forgets. Remember, the vertex is the maximum or minimum point of a parabola. It's where it turns around. And so the SAT loves to ask about it. And there are two ways to think about it. Number four, the axis of symmetry is technically giving us the vertical line that cuts right through the center of the parabola. But the most re useful uh, version of it for us is going to be to find the x coordinate of the vertex because if it goes to the center, it is going right through the vertex. So it gives us the x coordinate, negative b over 2a, and then we can use that x coordinate by plugging it into the equation and finding the y coordinate, and then we have the vertex. It's a very useful thing because we normally don't want to convert our equation into the vertex form because that involves complete the square, which is a very annoying operation in math. So we want to avoid that if possible. But they also do give us questions where the vertex form is just you know, given to us as is. And so we do need to be able to read that and pull the vertex out of it in order to understand something about the parabola. So we also use the letters H and K, kind of like we did with the circle, because just like HK is the center of the circle, the vertex is kind of the center of the parabola. And so just be careful because the H term will kind of be the flipped sign, but the K term will not. So that formula is really good. You are almost certainly going to see it on every SAT. Number two on our list, getting near the top here. These are the open formulas. This may seem strange. What is this? Have you ever heard of this before? Probably not, because unless you're subscribed to my channel, this is a completely made up formula that I made because percentages are so annoying on the SAT. It's where a lot of trap answers show up. So I made these three formulas to help us understand how percentages work and to prevent mistakes on these questions. This is really important. This is why it's number two, is this is a case where the SAT is absolutely going to mess with you, but this formula was designed to keep you from falling into their traps. So there are three versions. The it's general open formula, it looks like the word open, is when we want to find the percentage of something. So like what is 5% of 300? That's how we would use this OP equals N, where O is the original, P is the percentage as a decimal, and N is the new amount that we're getting out. But most often the SAT is going to ask us for percent change, percent greater than, percent less than. And so that's where this one plus or minus P version comes in, and that lets us incorporate this change in there. And the most important thing to remember is what is the original amount that we're taking the percent of versus what is the new amount that we're kind of getting out of this. That's easy to confuse, but this formula forces us to think about that. And then the open formula can also work when we have exponential equations because we can just top, uh, put a little t at the top of the percentage, and now we can take a percentage multiple times over multiple years, months, days, weeks, whatever it is, and that is a connection to these other percentage things. So this is, again, kind of like three formulas in one, and it's really helpful because the less we have to memorize, the better. And if we can link all these percentage ideas together, then hopefully we'll be able to avoid the traps on all three types of questions. And now for the most important formula you need for the SAT, it is the linear equation, y equals mx plus b. And this may seem anticlimactic because it's probably one of the easiest ones on this list. So why is it number one? Well, because it appears everywhere on the SAT. Like 25% of the SAT is just lines. So we have to be able to read this equation really well, right? Be able to pull the slope, which is the m, and the y-intercept, which is the b, out of this equation really quickly. We need to be able to build linear equations really quickly. So writing y equals mx plus b on your page is really, really important. And a lot of the story questions on the SAT involve of lines. So we, be, we also need to be able to translate back into this algebra if we have a story. And they won't use the word slope and y-intercept, but they'll use words like rate or change to indicate a, a slope or a starting point or initial value to indicate a y-intercept. So we can build linear equations very easily from most story questions. There are also these other ideas that come up with lines a lot that I threw in here just because when we have special linear systems where they have two lines and they describe that they either have no solutions, infinitely many solutions, solutions 
or if the lines are perpendicular, this tells us something very special about the relationship between the lines. And so we need to memorize these ideas. This is another thing that is almost certain to come up on your SAT. And for high scoring students, this is an easy place to get from that 650 to 700, 700 to 750. It can really knock your score up because it's a difficult concept, but it is memorizable and pretty repetitive. So it's an easy way to lock in those points. Woo! I hope that was helpful and I hope that you're going to do well on your SAT if you're taking it tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to this channel no matter whether you're at the start of your prep or at the end because it really helps me and I might have saved you 10 points just with this video so it's a nice way to thank me by subscribing and it also will open up all this library to you so that you can learn even more stuff in a much more comprehensive way where I won't be out of breath. So please subscribe. I appreciate it. Once again, I'm Mike Sattel, the founder of Sattel Tutoring and remember when it comes to your scores, don't settle for less. Satel for more. Thanks for watching.